We talk the ins and outs of the AR-15 barrel next. Hello and welcome back to the Stinger Workshop. My name is Rick Barrett and I'm your host for these series of videos where we talk about everything in the gun community from gun accessories to gun maintenance. Today we continue talking about the AR-15 platform, more specifically the barrel that is located in the AR-15 upper. Now to most of us, the barrel on the AR-15 that you're going to buy is going to be fine for the uses that you're going to be needing, whether it's self-defense, hunting, or even just planking. But there are those who engage in things like three-gun competitions or other precision shooting sports. For these people, the barrel of the AR-15 is arguably the most important part of the firearm. We're going to be talking about the length of the barrel and how that impacts your accuracy. We're also going to be talking about something called twist barrel rate and how that can impact your accuracy as well. When we're talking about barrel length on the AR-15 platform, a good rule of thumb to remember is the longer the barrel, the better the accuracy. So it is important to keep in mind that when you go to a gun store or a gun show and you're looking at the AR-15s that are on the shelf, those are going to be 16 inches in length. The reason why they are is anything below 16 inches in length on a barrel will be classified as something called an SBR. That's a short barreled rifle. Now, if you go with a short barreled rifle, you're going to have to talk to the ATF and pay them more money, but we'll talk about that in a different video. So now you know that the longer the barrel, the greater the accuracy. You now also know that when you go to a gun store or gun show, that the standard AR-15 barrel you're going to look at is 16 inches. So let's talk about the actual barrels themselves. When you're looking at the AR-15 barrel itself, you're going to be looking at three overall categories. Once again, we can break them down more specifically, but in this overall view, you can know these three types. There's the general purpose lightweight barrels. There's the general purpose midweight AR-15 barrel. And then there is the precision AR-15 barrel. Now to break down the AR-15 barrels, I'm going to break down the overall tiers of ARs. Essentially, there's different price points. I don't like using the word budget. There's entry level, there's mid-tier, and then there's really expensive. I mean, that pretty much translates universally. Uh, but your general purpose entry level AR-15s are ones that you buy at gun shows. They're reasonably priced and they're not bad rifles because most of the public who owns them will take them to the range two or three times a year. They may take them to an AR-15 uh, level one course to do a little bit of extra training, but most of the time they're gonna sit in your gun safe. So the barrel on this entry level is not cheap by any means. It's going to do the task that you want. It's a jack of all trades barrel and it's lightweight so you'll be able to use it a lot more without getting fatigued with it. So it's generally called the general purpose lightweight barrel on an AR-15, and that is on your entry level models. Now, if you wanna go into the second tier of AR-15 barrels, that's the midweight AR-15 barrel. Once again, that is just a little bit more money, but it's a little bit heavier. There's a little bit more mass. So if you are going to AR combat or AR carbine tactical courses, and you're running a lot of rounds through the barrel, it can handle that extra work. That's something you're gonna have to look into when you purchase your AR-15. Are you gonna be putting the work in with it? Because if you are, you're gonna want something with a little bit more mass, and that's gonna be the second tier, the general midweight AR-15 barrel. And then finally, the third tier, the very expensive uh, AR-15 barrels would be your precision AR-15 barrels. And these barrels are ones that are designed to deliver tight groups when you're performing in three-gun competitions or other shooting sport competitions. And they're designed to give you a more consistent performance. Of course, because they're more expensive, like anything else that's expensive, you have to be careful not to run them too hard. Uh, once again, it can still do the job, but it will not take the punishment as well as your midweight AR-15 barrel or even your lightweight AR-15 barrel, depending on what you're doing with it. But if once again, if you're looking for 
precision shooting, three gun, marksman type stuff. The precision barrel uh, is the, the level you would go to to tier three of these AR-15 barrels. So we've talked about barrel quality, for lack of a better term. You have your entry level with your lightweight, your mid tier with your mid weight AR-15, and your precision tier, which is your most expensive tier. Depending on what you're doing, one of these barrels will fit your needs. Now that you know about lightweight barrel, midweight barrel, and precision barrels on the AR-15, let's talk about something called twist barrel rate. Some people call it rifling. Now they'll come in three sets for most of us, one by seven, one by eight, and one by nine. What does all that mean? Well, the rifling or twist barrel rate is, for lack of a better term, it is the twist rate which indicates the distance required for one groove to make a complete turn, rotating 360 degrees. So a one by seven twist rate means one rotation of the bullet for every seven inches on the barrel. And the more spin that applies on the bullet, it gives you better accuracy coming out of the rifle. So when you go buy your AR-15 and you look on the barrel, it will say either one by seven, one by eight, or one by nine. Are there one by 12s? Yes. Do you need it? Most likely not. Once again, these twist rates are appropriate for our everyday needs or for what you and I are gonna be using an AR-15 for. So if you get an AR barrel that's one by seven or one by eight, don't think that it is not as good as a one by nine because the nine is higher. That's not necessarily true. If you have an AR-15 barrel with a one by seven twist, that's gonna do the job just as well as a one by eight or a one by nine. Now the last thing I wanna talk about when discussing the AR-15 barrel, now that we know about lightweight, midweight, and precision barrels, and the twist rate that comes in one by seven, one by eight, and one by nine, I wanna talk about the muzzle devices. Now muzzle devices come primarily in two different forms on the civilian market. You have flash suppressors and compensators. These are the two things you're gonna see when you pick up an AR-15 at a gun show or at a sporting goods store. So a flash suppressor is something you put on the front of your muzzle, and what it does, it minimizes the muzzle flash from the field of vision of the shooter. That's all it is. The other muzzle device is called a compensator, and it helps prevent muzzle climb. It ensures the accuracy of your follow-up shots. Those are two broad definitions of some muzzle devices that you'll find on your AR-15s. And that's it for this episode from the Stinger Workshop talking about the AR-15 barrel. I'm your host, Rick Barrett. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon.